Hey everyone, my name is Kaushik and welcome back to Let Code. In this video, we are going to learn about the filter function. So before getting into the scenario, let us see the code. So here we have this before all where we are setting this time out and we are navigating to this particular URL, right? Now if I go to this, here we can see that we have four check boxes. One is selected by default and others are not selected. Now let us assume that we want to get only the check boxes that are not selected. So of course we know that we have a function called is selected that is going to return us true or false. So whatever the values are going to be false, we want to fetch only that. To achieve this, we are going to use the filter function. Before that, let us try to get all the elements and we will print the count first. So here I can say double dollar that means we are using the jQuery shorthand operator and here I am going to pass the input as a tag name. Let us name this as let checkboxes we will print the count of this. So that means we are going to print the number of elements are there with this input tag. So here I am going to say console.log await checkboxes dot count. So it should be checkboxes. So I'm just going to click F2. F2 means of course we are going to rename this variable in my entire scope of the function, right? So here I can say boxes. So it, it is going to change in both the places. Now let us try to run this first. Okay. So here we can see that we got the output as 4. That means of course we have 4 input boxes. Now we are going to print only the value that are going to be of false. So to do that I am going to use this filter function. So checkboxes dot filter and within the filter it is going to be very same like our map only differences is in filter we must specify the return condition. If we don't say the return, it is going to give us error. So here I will say async and within this we are going to use the element and the index. So by default in the callback, we have to give these two values. Index is of course optional, but still we are going to use this. So if I mouse over here, you can see it is going to ask me a callback function where I have to pass the element and I have to pass the index. This question mark represent that it is of type optional. So here I'm going to use the arrow syntax and within the curly braces we are going to await first because of course we have to resolve the promise because we are going to use the is selected that is going to return us boolean right. So here we will say element dot is selected and then we will say that if the value is going to be false. So here I will say double equals false. That means this particular checkboxes we are filtering, right? So we are basically filtering based on the condition of is selected. So is selected is going to return us true or false. If the value is selected, it is going to return us true. If not, it is going to return us false. So here we are writing this condition. This is exactly like your if condition. So if true means, of course, we're gonna return this. So here we have to add the keyword called return. So whatever the value it is going to return, let us store that. So here I will say return unchecked and that's it. Now if I move over on this, here you can see, uh, of course we are not using this. So let us use this first. So here I will say unchecked dot each. So we know we already learned this function called each in our um, previous video, where it is going to iterate through each and every element, right? So what happens is when we are saying that is selected, it doesn't going to return us the boolean actually. I mean in the filter function. In the filter function, it is going to return us this particular element, not the state of this element. Okay. So that means it is not going to return us true or false. Rather, it is going to return us this particular element. Now from this element, again, we can print the values, right? So here I will say async and it is going to return us a element in the callback. And using the element, I'm just going to print the is selected state here, right? So here I will say await 
element dot is selected that's it now let us try to run this So here we can see that the last element is selected of course that means it is going to be true and other values are false right so in the console we can also expect the same result the first three values are going to be a false let us see that what happens if I don't use this filter function so I'm just going to comment this here and here I will use this checkboxes and here I will use this right now if I try to run this again so here we can expect three false and the last one is true, right? So we are going to get the same output. So here we can see the first is unselected. So we are getting this value as false and the last one is selected. So we are getting the value as true. So let me undo this first. Okay, so let me just quickly recap. So here we are using this filter function just to filter the desired output. So here our condition is whatever the element are not checked. That means is selected should return the false. If it's going to return the false, it is not going to return us false or true. Actually, it is going to return us the that element. So whatever the condition it has matched that element, it is going to return us. Now based on this, so whatever the, so it is of course it's going to be number of elements. So this is also going to be our element array finder. And based on that, we are again iterating and then we are printing the is selected state here. Now filter function I use most of the time in my project, but I'm not getting any good example of website to show you the demo. So I'm just going to uh, give you an idea how I'm using this. Maybe you will find this useful. Uh, assume that we have a web page where we have this save button and cancel button and it's coming dynamic that means uh, when we click one so the save button will come but it has different id another time when i'm going to do some crud operation again the save button will come but with a different id so of course i cannot write each and every time the ids so what we'll do is we'll just uh, iterate through the text of save button and we will print and we will check if the element is displayed. So if the element is displayed, then we will click on that particular element. So that is how we are using this filter function. Um, maybe uh, we'll get, uh, if I get some good examples, I'll, I mean some good website to show that, I will def definitely show you. But as of now, let us understand the syntax and probably you can do of your own this. This is very easy to understand. So if you understand the map function then filter is also very easy okay so it was a very quick video i know um, probably when we are going to learn something like a project structure or maybe the uh, end to end flow probably i will give you some good examples over there okay so thanks for watching see you in the next one very soon